So you're no longer the Master Chief. You're the newest member of a squad of orbital drop shock troopers. They're the mysterious soldiers with the untold tale. We talked a lot about how could we still take people out of one character, put them into the body of another character, and not confuse people. An ODST, I think, takes the lessons of Halo 2 and feels a lot more natural. You're going from one ODST to another. It's not so jarring as it was with the Chief and the Arbiter. What the hell am I supposed to do with this inside a Covenant ship? Romeo the smartass, or Mickey the kind of guy who just wants to blow up. Allowing the player to step into the shoes of all of these different characters in the squad makes this a game about what happens to that squad. It's hard to create not just characters, but then give them a, a relationship. That's, that's even tougher. Get this thing off of me. You've got Buck, who's the squad leader. He's the most hard-boiled, hard-bitten, seen everything, been everywhere, a little bit more cynical than the other soldiers because he survived the longest. No! They're gonna burn this city and then glass the whole planet! Covenant bastard! This is like rates all over again! Buck is the guy you wanna be. You believe in him because he cares about his squad. All I care about now is getting my men out of this city. At the same time, he's distracted by this this ex-girlfriend of his. Dare, she's an Oni operative. She takes over the squad. Replacements? This many years into the war? Who isn't? At least they listen. To me. And they're not gonna like what they hear. He wants to do his mission right. He wants to save his squad. And this whole time, Dare is, is there kind of poking him in the ribs. I never thought I'd see you again. Yeah? Well, here I am. There's something to be said about using Nathan and Trisha, who are, you know, really strong sci-fi actors. What we bring to the table is a lot of experience, a lot of spacefaring, a lot of changing trajectories, a lot of slip space ruptures. We know. Veronica definitely has balls. Oh. What was that for? Abandoning the mission. What mission? For me, it was about creating a credible history between the two of them. And by dipping into that history, I think that creates the relationship. Look, don't start about my job. We both agreed to end it. That was years ago, Veronica. I'm a little fuzzy on the details. We talked about what it would be like to suddenly be in the body of some other character who was just in the cinematic you just watched. Say again, Buck, you're breaking up. I said, stay put. I'm on my way. And then actually hear his voice coming out of your body. We missed our LZ. This grid is packed with Covenant. Be careful. I appreciate the concern. We call them Signets, and they're basically the, the last shot of a flashback cinematic, right before you take control of Dutch or take control of Buck. And it's a, it's a shot from first person. You can see your arms. You can see the weapon that you're holding. We use it as a kind of a direction indicator or a, a mission indicator. The player doesn't have control of the camera yet, and the character is kind of easing him into that and, and leading him into where he needs to be going and what he needs to be doing. You really kind of get inside some of these characters, and I think that the signets help so it wasn't quite so jarring. Mickey, you're with me. We often talked about the ODST as a kind of detective, a you know, lone gumshoe in the dark, mysterious city. Hey, let's drop one man that's not a Spartan on his own into a dangerous environment and let him really solve a mystery, let him find clues. We wanted to really get a different kind of Halo uh, look and feel from what we've seen before. One of the cool challenges was how do we make the city of New Mombasa, in a, in a way, a character in the game? sound was was critical in helping us really create that pacing and mood. We tried to make everything kind of quieter, especially when you're in the hub. We wanted the hub to be dark and rainy and have that film noir feel. There was a point halfway through the production where the, the programmer said, we can't implement rain in the engine. Maybe we don't actually have rain falling all over the place, but we have to have the feel of that rain is in the distance. It's raining in that environment because of the sound guys. We also switched the surface types on the ground to kind of have kind of that wet, slappy footstep. As the thing started taking a life of its own, in no way did I want to hear any Halo music reused. It really deserved to have its own flavor from beginning to end. The score that Marty wrote really lent itself to both that film noir feeling and that feeling of loneliness that you have in the hub. How do you 
make a difference musically from the daytime action scenes and always bring you back to the nighttime hub was a little bit of a challenge. First thing I said is no monks. There just cannot be monks in this thing. I knew I could use a solo saxophone, which has a really nice interaction with orchestral instruments. It's not something you normally hear with an orchestra. And it could really just change the whole color and feeling that sort of carry you through the hub. As the game itself got bigger and bigger, I needed more and more music, which is why I have more gray hair. So that's how that goes. There are some key elements that, that you'll find in the city. What if the phones rang? What if the ticket kiosks began to spit tickets and coins came out of uh, vending machines? What if the city was trying to communicate with you? What the heck's going on? Sir, I'm really sorry about this. I was just trying to get out of the city. The thing that's the most different for me playing this game is the ability to randomly pick up the radio play story which tells an entirely different story with entirely new characters. Old Mombasa, Dad, this is ship. Listen, sweetheart, I wanted to tell you at breakfast, but you left so early. So the ringing phone became this, this jumping off point for what eventually became the superintendent. And then Sadie's story, too. A car just came out of nowhere, smashed all the brutes. Was that you? Uh, my head. I thought airbags were supposed to stop you from getting hurt. Your tax dollars at work. So the superintendent's tale is this really neat evolutionary piece that you follow throughout the whole game. It's a very simple story when you get down to it, but it's told in an elegant way, in a complex way. You can understand and enjoy the ODST story if you don't pick up any of the telephones ringing in the city or any of the other objects. But if you do, you're going to be transported a little bit further back in time to the day before, but to a whole different world. Like a detective, you have to put it all together, and it's the layers that, that make the story so interesting. We wanted to make sure that you met the people of that city. You knew the stakes, what you were fighting for.